So, Carlin, I get questions from clients who are moms um, about how to make time to masturbate. And I'm not a mom, but I get it. You know, you're constantly in service to your children. And this is at all ages. I hear this from mothers with infants through mothers with teenagers. And they feel guilty. One, they feel guilty about making time. And the other point is they don't know how to make time in the day. So Carlin, you're a mom. How do you do that? Well, it's fascinating because um, I felt that after I gave birth, I had to get my body back. I had to reconnect to my body. It was very important to me. And it took the better part of a year before I felt like myself again. And so I didn't desire orgasm or masturbation, right? I'm breastfeeding all the time. You're bathing them every day. It's just like you're trying to keep this little person alive, right? Mm -hmm. All the time. Mm -hmm. And I found that like when I committed to daily masturbation, it made me a better mom. Uh, I, I slept better. I wasn't as irritated all the time. So you have to take your moment. And this is why vibrators can be very handy. Because you don't always have the time for the build up with your hand. Mm -hmm. So what I would do when he was an infant is I would breastfeed him. And when I would take care of his needs, then I would put him in the bassinet next to the bed. That way they're with you because if they're not with you, they're crying. And I would, the dog would be on the other side of me and I would masturbate and I'd take a quick orgasm before I would shower. Mm -hmm. Then when he became a toddler, and this is a little more challenging because now they're running all over the place, I would do it after breakfast. Um, I'd pop him in the playpen, put something on TV, and I would have my bedroom door open so I could see him and he can kind of see me, right? And then I would masturbate that way before my shower. Always kind of before the shower, I would earmark like 20 minutes, Mm -hmm. which is very doable. Um, yeah. And I feel like if you heard something, like those are such wonderful sounds to hear mm-hmm. as a new being. And yeah, it should be my body that he sees first. So I didn't feel like that was kind of endangering his development anyway. I felt like he he sees me making time for myself. Yes, yes. And I think that's such a positive. We hear all the time women who have trouble having an orgasm as an adult. When we talk about their past, their mother was not orgasmic. Having an orgasmic sex positive mother makes a huge difference in the attitudes of sex when your children grow up. So, you know, you're doing it not only for you, you're doing it for your child, too. It's the best lesson they can learn, Mm -hmm. right? I remember Mm -hmm. walking into my parents when they were having sex once and my parents just stopped. My mom put on a robe. She, I think I was sick. I threw up in my bed and she walked me and it was all so natural and normal. And you know what? I didn't ask a question, right? Because it wasn't, there was nothing to ask. I just saw them and they were together doing something. And I just said, I don't feel good. So when we take the shame out, right? That's a fantastic lesson. And, you know, he did things like he walked in one day when I was changing my menstrual cup and he went, oh my God, mommy, are you okay? And I said, yes, I'm okay. And I, and he goes, well, why are you bleeding? So just really quick, he's five years old. I said, well, every month, if mommy doesn't have a baby, I bleed. It's my superpower. Mm -hmm. It's how you're here. And it happens to every woman at a certain age once a month. And that's how we give birth to the next generation. And he went, oh, okay. Yeah. But now in his mind, he sees menstruation as something positive. Right. I think as parents, we feel like there has to be one the talk. And there is no one the talk. It just, you just answer questions at their level as they come up. As they ask you. And then now he's seven and it is easier to make that time. Right. Because now he's going to play dates or he's going to birthday parties. So for me, the weekend is definitely my self pleasure time, you know, because I drop mm-hmm. him off at school and then I start working and it's hard to find time in the day. So on a Saturday, instead of organizing something 
or cleaning something first. I take my pleasure first. Right. Right. So as yes. soon as everyone's out of the house, yeah, I'm like revving up my wand. <laughs> like, yes. That's it. Yeah. I, as, as your child gets older, um, you know, when they're a teenager, they start having activities, soccer practice, you know, choir practice, band practice, whatever it might be. You don't have to stay for all the practices. Drop them off and go home and take some time for yourself. I think that's very healthy because, you know, I have a son and I want him to respect women and I want him to value women. Mm -hmm. And when I respect and value myself, right, mm -hmm. you don't have to utter a word about feminism. He's going right. to respect women and expect them. It's like setting the expectation, the expectation yes. that women need time. So when I can self-pleasure, what's amazing to me is I can get everything else done that I need to in the day. Yes. And I do yeah. it right with a light heart and I'm happy. And that's the whole point. Mm -hmm. I get a hit of my pleasure hormones and I'm a happy mom.